and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and today I'll be customising this Matchbox MB595 TVR Tuscan S. It was introduced in 2003 and in my opinion is arguably the best Matchbox model produced in the 2000s. To date it is the only TVR model that Matchbox made. This black livery was from 2013, the final production year. Here it is in mint condition. I'll be replicating this with its reflex paint scheme. The colours change from green to purple depending on the light source. For the 7 spoke wheels I've again turned to the ever excellent Creative 164. These Honda Civic Type R wheels are a decent match. It's surprisingly difficult to find narrow 7 spoke wheels as seen on the Tuscan. So while I dismantle the casting I'll quickly summarise the details of the Matchbox model. While the Tuscan was first produced in 2003, it didn't enter the Matchbox mainline until 2006. It debuted in a Looney Tunes 5 pack. In 2004, it featured in the short lived Around the World series and a Justice League release, while it also had a release in the revamped Superfast line. The 2005 model had tampos from the Ed, Ed and Eddie cartoon. This was, of course, the disaster era for Matchbox after all. The 2006 mainline model was painted in a nice metal flake blue, but it disappeared from the mainline for a year in 2007. It did however receive a metal flake purple colour in another short lived Best of British series. Its return to the mainline in 2008 was in a not so nice metal flake lime green with white side skirt TVR tampos. It could also be found in a far nicer orange metal flake with black tampos. It changed to an awful looking metal flake brown colour for 2009 which had a white central stripe tampo running the length of the casting. It disappeared for a few years until 2013 when this black model was launched. TVR are a quirky British sports car manufacturer that were founded by Trevor Wilkinson. The name TVR comes from the letters within his first name. He started his engineering business in Blackpool, England in 1946, which was initially called Trev Car Motors. TVR built its first original chassis in 1949. After the first three cars were built and either crashed, sold or raced, the sports saloon was offered for sale as a kit in 1954. Each model that left the factory was unique. In 1955, a successful racing car driver from Manchester, New Hampshire ordered a TVR chassis that would be called the Jomar. Before receiving his first chassis, Ray Seidel ordered a further two chassis in 1956. Using the Jomar chassis, TVR then went about creating its first original body style with a car referred to as the Open Sports. Three or four of these were built before a coupe was built in 1958. Later that year, the first production TVR launched with the fastback styled Grand Shura. All were hand built over a period of 9 years and eventually 796 were produced. They were offered for sale in the US by Seidel and sold as the Jomar Coupe. Meanwhile however, the company was experiencing serious financial hardships and in 1962 Wilkinson resigned from the company. Shakily, the company struggled on and in 1963 a new prototype called the Griffith was unveiled. It was so named after Jack Griffith, a Long Island based Ford dealer with the sports car his brainchild. 300 of these models were produced between 1963 and 1967. But by the end of 1964, TVR went into liquidation. Arthur and son Martin Lilly purchased the company assets in 1965. While production of the Grand Tura and Griffith continued, the Lilies were aware the company required new models, so the TVR Tuscan was unveiled in 1967. It did not provide the boost the company needed as only 156 were built over 4 years of production. Later in 1967, the Vixen launched and it proved to be a popular model. During its 6 years of production, 1029 were built featuring TVR's own fiberglass bodies. The Vixen's replacement was the M series. This also replaced the original Tuscan. Until 1979, 2,465 of these sports cars were manufactured. 
The car was a success domestically and crucially in the American market. In 1980, the first of a series of TVR wedges were introduced with the Tasmin. These modern wedge-shaped cars were a departure from the classic curvaceous designs of its predecessors. Sales were lacklustre though due to its controversial new styling, which Martin Lilly was unhappy with. This coincided with the recession of the early 80s, meaning yet again TVR were in trouble. Modern TVRs at the turn of the millennium and beyond were notorious for their vibrant colour schemes, both internally and externally. For my interior piece, I've gone with a pale blue similar to that of the inset image. As you already know, I'll be recreating TVR's reflex paint on the outside. For this, I'm using Tamiya's PS46 iridescent purple green. But I made a bit of a blunder with the paint, forgetting it is designed for polycarbonate RC shells that are painted on the inside. You can kind of see the effect working, but I learned some crucial instructions were hidden from me. Under the plastic wrap was this. What I should have done is paint a black base layer, the opposite of the instructions that I'd missed. Then we should see some better results from the paint. In 1981, Peter Wheeler bought TVR and swapped power plants to Rover's V8 across the range. The production of the Wedge variant continued under many different names, but it wasn't until 1986 that the first new car under Wheeler's stewardship would appear. The S series reintroduced the more familiar styling of the M series, and the car proved to be a turning point in the company's fortunes. 150 models were pre-ordered at that year's British Motor Show before any moulds had been made. 2,604 were built between 1987 and 1994. That paint is going on far better now. Let's see how it dries. In 1991 and 1992, two new models went on sale following the success of the S. The new Griffith and the later Chimera were built on mostly the same platform as a two-seat Roadster, but the Chimera was more spacious and had softer suspension for Grand Touring. 2,304 Griffiths were built up to 2002, while 5,256 Chimeras were made during nine years of production, making it the most successful TVR model in terms of sales figures. In 1996, the hardtop Cerbera was unveiled. This was a 2 plus 2 sports car that was closely related to the Chimera. It was a move away from the traditionally two-seat TVR models, but notably it was the first to be powered by TVR's own engines. The Cerbera was also the platform for the 7.7-litre V12-powered Cerbera Speed 12, reportedly capable of producing 1,000 horsepower in 1996. Only three of these were produced. In 1999, the model the casting is based on launched. The TVR Tuscan Speed 6 was either a target op or convertible two-seat sports car. It was front mid-engined, rear-wheel drive, and had a typically TVR fiberglass body. Cars were powered by a 3.6 or 4-litre straight six. The Tuscan S, like the casting, was the top-of-the-line model, producing 390, later 400 brake horsepower. They also had a rear lip spoiler to improve downforce. It had a facelift in 2005 and was renamed the Tuscan II. Production ran until 2006 with 1,677 built. The 2002 Tamora replaced the Griffith and Chimera, while the T350 was based on the same platform and came as either a coupe or had a target top. Russian banker Nikolai Smolensky bought TVR from Peter Wheeler in 2004. Under his reign, the T350-related Cigaris Coupe launched in 2004, as well as the limited-run Typhon. Smolensky would resign as director in 2006, with the company yet again in financial turmoil, but bought the company back in early 2007. He again relinquished ownership of TVR in 2013, selling the company to a consortium. The company has been pretty much dormant since, though it did produce a second-generation Griffith prototype in 2017, the company's 70th anniversary. This car was designed by Gordon Murray with the intention of it reaching production in 2023. Thus far, this hasn't happened. Anyway, I'd reached this point in the video production and something just wasn't right. I wasn't happy with the overall appearance. And then it clicked. The wheels were simply too small to fill the massive arches. 
Coincidentally, and quite conveniently, Creative 164 released these Yokohama 7 spokes just as I was looking where to turn next. These are slightly bigger rims at 8.5mm instead of 79 They look even more authentic too, which is a bonus. So I hope you've enjoyed my ramblings about TVR. There aren't any other castings of TVRs that I'm aware of in this scale, so I thought I'd jam their entire history into about 8 minutes. I don't know when I'll next get an opportunity. I use my Micron pen to draw the black of the brake calipers in, and like the TVR badge on the nose of the car, the wheel centre caps are coloured in gold. So this is how my TVR Tuscan S looked. The paint was pretty solid, if lightly scratched in certain lights, with the worst of the scratching being on the transparency. The wheels had lost a lot of their trim too. There was only one paint that I wanted to use on this TVR, and boy am I pleased Tammy had produced it. The Reflex Purple Green or Oil Slick paint goes hand in hand with the Tuscan. You'll see it change colour on the turntable as it rotates. And here it is. See how that left side has turned from purple to green. It is a fantastic paint and I'm chuffed to bits with it. There weren't too many areas requiring trim, especially at the front as those three lights on either side are tiny. But the TVR badge was trimmed in gold and side repeaters, mirrors and windshield wipers were all improved. Again, the small light clusters to the rear were coloured to factory spec. The wheels are still a tad too small for those giant arches, but they are acres better than the Honda rims. I'm pleased that I painted the front grille too, rather than just leaving it black, as it blends in so well. It's easy to gloss over the interior too, with the bright blue not at all tasteful, but that's just the way TVR were in this period. Leave a like if you enjoyed this custom, and drop your thoughts in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't already, but all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.